But you mentioned the words responsive and the words adaptive, which are two terms that um, uh, we've thrown. Does anybody want to know the specific definition of those, or can we argue about those? Huh? They're the same thing. OK, so w w what does that mean? Well, first of all, let's have Chris uh, Stauffer give your point of view as a dorky uh, uh, human um, on the differences between adaptive, responsive, fluid, all those kind of terms that are confusing the hell out of all of us. OK, so they're responsive and adaptive are not the same. They're not the same at all, actually. So uh, the difference is kind of on the way that you approach writing your code, uh, which is also directly related to the way that the designers end up designing the system. So adaptive, I'm going to go a little nerdy on you here for a second. Uh, when a device requests something from a web server, we know what that device is. And then we can respond back to the end user with a different set of HTML dependent on which device it is. So what that does is it gives you the ability to have, for example, a regular desktop website that was designed in one fashion that could be completely different from the way that a mobile website might be delivered uh, back to the consumer. Uh, so in my recent experience, uh, we designed the mobile application for uh, LACMA, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. And for them, their website uh, is in Drupal and is one set up and looks a specific way. It is branded for LACMA, but then the mobile experience is a completely different experience. And it is device dependent, and those experiences change based on which device uh, is requesting the web server. A responsive website is one that actually is the same design that simply adjusts based on the screen size that the user has. So what a lot of people kind of think of, and a lot of people use the word fluid design in this respect as well. I'm going to put that over here. Uh, because it gives them the ability to design a set of kind of like blocks or a grid on the page. And that grid may collapse based on usually the width of the user's screen. So for example, on our stoffer.com site, we would have you know, maybe one leader, uh, sorry, one kind of uh, media rotator that might show up in the, in the middle. And that could actually adjust down to be a little smaller. And then underneath that, we have three bricks. Well, when you're looking at the three bricks on a desktop, you know, they're aligned horizontally. But then when you open it up on your iPhone, each one of the three bricks collapse under. So it's still the same content, still the same design. It just responds to the size of the user's screen and then changes accordingly. Make right. sense? Question. Yeah. From the young lady. So based on what you just said, is it correct to say that adaptive is contingent on the device yes. and responsive is contingent on the browser that's being used, the size, the, size. the screen size? OK. First of all, I'm going to say something crazy. It doesn't matter that much. Diego, do you want to come on up? We have a coffee uh, cup holding your spot. Um, it introduced itself earlier. The. Uh, the way that I try to look at it is one that the, the device specificity, and Diego can probably talk a little bit about this. I'll give you an example. Um, I look at adaptive as adapting the content to a new format uh, for a mobile device, where I look at responsive as it's the same site, same bit code base, and it just responds to the size of the browser. And he's saying that LACMA is actually more of a hybrid because you also have an app. It's two completely different sites. Uh, got it. Two different experiences. Same data is being pulled. So the one thing that I wanted to say is that it, it doesn't matter as much which when it comes to content and when it comes to the narrative and it, when it comes to creative, you want them to look the same. It does matter when it comes to some of the development issues. Diego, you came up with this topic. And you have another question. You want to have a follow up there? And I want to ask Diego something afterwards. Because I want to make sure we're really clear about this. Um, <laughs> so you said with adaptive, the content stays the same with the device. Or the content adjusts depending dependent on the device. So does that mean uh, we have to subtract content? But does that mean we have to design now multiple mul for multiple uh, devices? Absolutely. Yeah, one of the main differences between responsive versus adaptive is usually when I get a uh, design 
assets from a designer, uh, I'll get one PSD file for a responsive site, and then usually instructions, usually in wireframes, that'll tell me how it's going to logically collapse. Versus when I get adaptive design comps, I may, for example, get a set of comps that apply for mobile, then I'll get another set of comps that apply for a tablet, and then another set of comps that apply to desktop. So I might actually have to build that three times. And one of the main compelling reasons or arguments for responsive design is it ends up being a hell of a lot cheaper uh, on the tech side. Because one of my engineers is then writing, I'm going to call it like maybe 1.3 times the code of just doing it in desktop versus three times if I was doing it in adaptive. So that's kind of one of the primary reasons why responsive is just killing it in the marketplace nowadays.